And welcome back to redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd. I'm your host Mikey and today bigger is better. If you're looking at Pinterest lately, you notice that big, fun, bulky, oversized scarves are currently the trend. So what happens when your knitting needles don't go to your size? And in fact, yeah, this is a big needle, but it's not big enough. Today we're gonna to be using our arms to being able to knit. Now in this particular video today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you some tips and I'm also gonna be changing the camera angle so that it makes sense for you. Whether you're right-handed or left-handed, you'll be noticing in the description of this video whether it is right or left-handed because even though we're using both of our arms to being able to knit back and forth, the way that you get started if you're left or right-handed and it probably makes a difference for you in order to be comfortable. So let's uh, get started today and I'm gonna share some tips with you right off the bat and then we're gonna get right into our project right away. So the first thing we need to do is pick our yarn and we need to choose something that's ultra thick and ultra bulky. You can do the sachet products, you can do the stellar products, you can also do Red Heart Vivid and I'm gonna be doing Red Heart Vivid today. When you commit to your product, you need to have two balls. So whatever you have, you can mix it and make it variegated if you want. So for me, I have two balls of Vivid on standby and I'm gonna be using that for the duration of my tutorial. So let's get. So down on the floor is my Vivid and I have two strands coming up just like so. So I'm just gonna put them together and pretend they're kind of like one at this point. And we need to create the tail to start off with. And we want about three to four feet. So we're just gonna just roughly two, three, and four. And this is where we're gonna create a slip knot. So from your perspective, and I am gonna change the camera angle, we're gonna create a slip knot. So you're gonna use both strands together and I will show you a different perspective of this so that you can get on it. And there is your first slip knot. And so you have this going to the tail and the one falling down is directly to the yarn ball. So now, now I'm naturally right-handed and I have slipped this onto my left hand. So that might give you a good perspective on what you're doing here. And as we're working on it, we're gonna be growing up the stitches on the left hand. So as we grow it, this beginning one is gonna move further down my arm, just like you see. So the tightness of it, you need to make sure you can get your wrist out of it. And obviously the looser you make it, the, the looser it makes the stitches. So with my strand, this is the tail end, I'm just gonna grab both of them, just like so. To begin the casting on process, this is what we need to do. Simply, you will notice that the two strings are working uh, separately, just like you see here. I want you to grab it straight on like this and wrap your fingers tightly around it. What I want you to do is that slide your pointer finger and your thumb between the two sections of string. So there will be two that are part of this one and two are part of that one. And we want you to slide them to just like through, like you see. Open them up and move your palm down without letting that string going up over your fingers or your thumb and then turn your hand over just like this. So I'm gonna show that one more time. So just going straight in, okay? And then slip your fingers through like this. And so then I'm gonna put my hand down so then it went over top of my finger and my thumb and I wanna turn my hand over. So let me show you another perspective. So from this perspective, I wanna grab my yarn, just like you see here, and you will be able to notice that the strings are working in tandem to each other, just like you see in the knot. So just grabbing through, and I want to slip my finger and my thumb through there and open it up, just like you see. And now I wanna move my hand down, and I wanna turn my hand over, just like you see there. So I'm gonna show you one last perspective and what we want to do is that here is your knot that is going around and the two strings are gonna be working in tandem and I just wanna grab it just like you see here and using my pointer finger and my thumb, I just wanna squeeze it through just like though to separate it and I wanna move my arm down and I wanna turn this hand over just like that. So now that your yarn is in your hand properly, and I'm going to show you three different perspectives of this as well, we're just going to immediately grab our other hand that's stuck in the knot here, and I want to slip it up underneath my thumb. So I want to slide it along my palm and come up under, just like you see here. So come up under, and I want to put it onto my hand, but you notice how I got my thumb here? It's stopping it from sliding onto my arm, and that's what I want at this point. And I want to come back now to the other side, and I want to really kind of like dive around that hand and come around. So when I come in, I'm going to put my hands in and come around from the back, just like you see, and then just slide my hand or my fingers through the back side of it, and I want to pull it through. 
And what that will do is that it will have this other one that was on my hand just to kind of naturally fall off. And I want to slide it onto my wrist just like a bracelet. And I want to take this string and tighten it up. So let me show you once again. So we're going to, if so, I'm just letting go of everything. So just again, grabbing everything, slipping your fingers through and pulling it back. And we're just going to slide it along the palm on the underside, like so. And it's on my hand up and, and I have everything open so it does not slide onto my wrist. And now I'm going to come back to this one here and I want to dive around it, just like you see, and just pull that through that loop and that will naturally fall down. And I want to slip that onto my wrist. Okay, so my yarn is now in my hand and now I want to use this hand that is in the knot and I want to slide it up through my palm. So just slide up along and come on the, underneath that just right there. And I want to just partially put it onto my hand. I don't want to go all the way onto my wrist at this point. And now with this other finger here, I want to put my fingers around the back side of it and just pull th my wrist and my, my fingers through it through the back side, just like you see. And this one will naturally just fall off like that. And so we just have to tighten everything back up. So we're just going to slide up along the palm and grab everything just like you see off the thumb. And we're going to come around to this other finger and grabbing it from the other side like this and pulling it through and just naturally pull that over like that. And then just slide that on like a bracelet and pull tight again. Okay, to begin we have two strands now hanging down. One will be your tail end. We're going to leave that down and out of the way at this moment. And we're going to start playing with the string that's going to the yarn. So what I need you to do is that we need you to grab this. So whatever hand that this is all onto is the hand that holds the yarn when you're going over. And you want to clench your fist. So this hand here that's free at this point is that you're going to take the first one just like so. And you're going to put it over. And simply you're going to come in from the back side, just like you see, and put it onto this wrist. And at this point, it's going to look like you're handcuffed. So you have to commit to your project. So you need to pull everything tight again. So just put it into this hand, just like you see, and pull it tight. And so using this hand now, because we're shifting everything from here to over here, we're just going to move it up and over, just like you see, come in from the back. Just slide it on, and now put it back into your other hand. So just use both of your hands to tighten it back up, up and over, coming in from the back. Just like you see. So it's really, really easy. So just holding it in your hand, coming up and over, and turning it, and sliding it on. And now everything has now shifted from one arm to the other. To begin with, the tails are over here. I'm going to leave those now down and out of the way for the remainder of this project. And whatever hand has all of this knitting is the hand that's going to hold it to be able to secure it. So just put it into your hand and clench, just like you see. Now take the first stitch and just go right up over your fist, just like so. And now just coming from the back side, slide your wrist, other wrist in. So this is what it looks like at this point. It looks like you're handcuffed to your knitting. So we're now we're going to take the string that's leading to the yarn ball and put it into the other hand. And I just want to tighten everything. So just don't be scared to play with it and tighten it. And now we're going to go for the next stitch. Just up and over and coming in from the back side. So it has a natural twist to it. And then grabbing the yarn again leading to the ball. Tighten everything back up. Just like you see. Now I will admit this takes a little bit of practice uh, to be able to understand how to do this. But once you get the rhythm, it goes really quickly, just like you see. So coming in from the back. So, so we're going to start off with the very first stitch here. And this now is the hand that's going to hold it as these slide up over top. So we're just going to slide up the first one, just like you see here. And I want to just turn it just like this. And you need to keep it so that the string is on the back side of the project. So the first one is always going to be a little bit looser than the rest. And this is where you're going to have to tighten everything back up. So now this is the hand that needs to hold it because we're moving one over the other and just slide up the next one, just like you see, and then slide this onto your next wrist and pull everything nice and tight again. Now, because I'm naturally right handed, I want to use my right hand to do a lot of the work. And uh, that might be just something that you'll find with yourself as well. 
like you see. So now everything's now been shifted back to the other side. To begin again, now to go to the other direction, it's already what you know, and just taking the string, and this is gonna be the one that holds it, and we come back up over top, and now we come in from the back side, just like you see, and we tighten everything, just like you see. So just coming up and over, and coming in from the back. So, so you can actually really speed along with this as well. So to move it to the other hand, once again, you're just gonna keep going back and forth. This is the hand that will hold this clench, going up and over, and just slide your hand through, keeping the string on the back side. Just like you see. keeping everything nice and tight and then just keep going back and forth. So now this is the hand that will hold it and coming up and over through the back side. Just tighten everything up. Like this. So really quite simple in order to do it. So this is what you end up with at this point, and then I'm gonna show you how to be able to cast off with this in just a moment. To begin the casting off process, you just need to do it the same way that you'd do if it was needles. So essentially what we need to do is that we're gonna move it to the other hand, but we're gonna start casting off at the same time. So this is the hand that has it, everything. We're gonna clench everything down in, and then we're just gonna slide up and over, just like we have been going all along, and tighten everything. So this is the very first process. So this hand is naturally holding it because this one has to slide up and over and coming around. And now we have two on this particular wrist. We now take the one that's furthest up your arm and just putting up over just like so. And what we're doing is a bind off. So we're just now gonna come back and this is gonna hold the next for the next one going up and over. And then we're just sliding on the next one. So you now have two up your arm. You're gonna take the one that's furthest up the arm up and over just like you see, and now tighten everything back up, and then just slide the next one up and over, put it on, tighten everything up, and now take the furthest one up your arm again, up and over, and this is your last one, just like you see here, and now we're gonna take it up and over, and this is your very last string, and all you just need to do at this point is that you just need to trim this off, and then just put it through this particular loop, and then tie it off, and then just weave in your ends at that point. So I know people are gonna email me in regards to how to do this off, so I've already trimmed my ends now, and have the remainder loop, I'm just gonna pull this string through, just like you see, and make it tight, just like you see. And then what I want to do is I just want to wrap it around a few of the areas on the bottom, along the bottom binded edge. And because this is a really loosey-goosey scarf, it's really easy to be able to do this and to be able to hide in the knots that you'll see at the end. Just like you see, nice and tight. Just like you see, and I'm gonna pull it real tight at that point. And what I want to do at this point is just weave in a couple more areas and just do it so that it really will get lost in it. Now if you want to do an infinity scarf where both sides are attached together, you just have to watch how you're putting everything together and simply these tail ends that you have, you can just bring it through to the other side to be able to kind of bind them together, to tie them together at the very end. So just wrapping around the edge, just like you see, from one side of the scarf to the other. Just going around. This is the wonderful thing about this bulky yarn is that it's really forgiving for not having to play that close attention to much. <laughs> so what we have here, and then coming back to the other side, and because you only have five stitches, you don't have a lot of, basically, area to cross over. Coming back to the final one here. And so I, what I wanna do then at this point is that I wanna just tie it, just like you see, and then I wanna weave in my ends again, and therefore I'll end up with a permanent loop just like you see. So once I get rid of the loose ends, just like you see, you can actually wear it twice around your neck. So there you have it. This is today's tutorial of doing an arm scarf knitting with your arm to make extra big, bulky, beautiful 
scarves, just like you see. Until next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd, and we'll see ya.